Genesis, 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 Genesis chapter 6. When you have it, say amen. Starting at verse number 9. The word of God says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man. The only blameless person living on earth. Boy, look at that term. At the time when he walked in, at that time, church, listen, he walked in close fellowship. Uh, he walked in intimacy. Uh, he was unified with God. Verse 10 says, Noah was the father of uh, Shem, Ham, and Jahef, Jahef, Japheth. Now God saw, verse 11, God saw, watch this church, that the earth had become corrupt. You get that back over in chapter 5 and early in chapter 6. God observed all this corruption in the world, church. For everyone on earth was corrupt. Everyone, not one single person, only Noah. Noah stood out. Righteousness always stands out. God said to Noah, I have decided. God communicating, sharing with Noah. God said, I have decided to destroy all living creatures. For they have filled the earth with violence. Look at the world today, church. God is speaking. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. This is God. He tells Mo, uh, Noah, verse 14, build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout the interior. Oh my God, external, internal. Come on, somebody. Make the boat 450 feet, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. Leave an 18 inch opening. Tell me God ain't detailed. Leave us leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side, strategic, and build three decks inside the boat. Lower, middle, upper. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Outer court, inner court, holiness of holiness. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Friday, Saturday, got up on Sunday. My God, my God, build the lower, middle, upper. Look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. But I will confirm my covenant. Oh my God, I can't wait till God release me on that with you. So enter the boat. You and your wife and your sons and their wives bring a pair of bring a pair of every kind of animal, male and female. Into the boat which you keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you. To be kept alive. One person is saving a nation. Oh my God, y'all need to hear me. Be sure to take, in, take on board enough food for your family, for all the animals. And verse 22, and Noah did everything exactly the way the Lord commanded him. Lord, help me deliver your word in a few minutes I have. Lord, my God, speak, Lord, prophetically. Speak from revelation. Help the people. I decrease right now so you may increase. Thank you for this great Augustine of belief us. Thank you for all that you're about ready to do. Save a soul. Reclaim someone that don't know you and that may have walked away from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My God. Want me to try my lapel again? Testing, testing, testing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Keep that hot and ready just in case, son. Oh, my God. You know, I be studying. I be doing a lot. I was privileged uh, to go over there and witness Bishop Cooper, now the senior pastor of World War for Christ, be, get ordained and installed as a bishop. So me and Bishop McIntosh uh, made our way over yesterday, and Minister uh, Cornell and Sister Patrice was there. Also, Minister Tedrick was there. And as he was, as I watched and witnessed greatness, um, the man of God personally called me, invited me to come. And so I took the liberty to bring my spiritual father with me. And so, but when the, the bishop, the presiding bishop that Pastor Cooper is up under, got up in the pool pit. <laughs> you know where I'm going, Patrice. And the man of God confirmed, I give God the glory. He got up and talked about God is still looking from Jeremiah chapter 5. I'm going to preach that one day. My God, my God, Jeremiah 5. But he got up and said, God is still. Jeremiah 5, you can read it. Looking for one person yes, that will stand for righteousness, 
that would preach against sin. The bishop also said, who I never met out of New York, said that God, my God, is raising up that one person who's not concerned about money but concerned about people's health. He also, my God, said that God is raising up that one person, my God, that's not afraid to stand for what God stands for. Is that not what he said, Cornell? So me and Patrice, Bishop sitting right here next to me, and Patrice and Cornell is right next over. So me and Patrice look at each other. And I'm so happy, giving God the glory, because God also, my God, allowed my daughters and my son, Minister Tedgy, them to go to another church and, and hear a bishop confirm everything that's being preached from this pulpit. See, God has a way, my God, of winking at me and winking at y'all. Some of us need to hear that when you go other places, my God, like y'all went to the Word Explosion and T.D. Jakes and, and Jetson Franklin and, and Steve Furrick or Furtick, whatever his name is, my God, some of my daughters said, my God, they went over there to that conference and a lot of the things that they were saying was the same thing that you're saying, Pastor. You're just using different verbiage. But everybody want to go every place to try to get a word that's already been preached from the pulpit, and that's okay. But it felt so good, my God, to be able to see the man of God talk about specifically those words that I just introduced you to. Sin, righteousness, one person that's concerned about the well-being of people's lives being healthy. Is that not what he said, Cornell? Amen. See, I'm trying to say this kind of sounds like something that's being preached over her. Yeah. Not only is it being preached, it's the structure of the ministry. My God, it's set up for you and I to remain healthy. You never get out of training. And so, my God, as I said that, I was studying and reading, my God, and I'm looking at society. And Pastor Jeff so blessed my soul because I've been out of service because I've been in discipleship classes. But Pastor Jeff in first service so blessed my soul, my God, as he began to talk about the danger of the world trying to creep into the church. It's been like that, but it's getting more and more and more and more where the church is starting to feel and look like the world. We starting, we, 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 we starting to dress any kind of way when we come to the church. We don't care about how we look, my God. We come before God any kind of way. We come before God like we're sitting in the club somewhere. We don't care about, my God, if our hair ain't combed, teeth ain't brushed. We don't care if our shoes is dirty, my God. We don't care if we stick gum on the chairs and stuff. That's all of the world, my God. But I promise you, I will not let the world snuff us out and going off of Christ church. And so if it consists of the order and the structure, my God, to keep the world out, my God, and keep us protected in, I'm still with the sermon, keep the world out. And so we can keep ourselves protected in, I'm willing to do that. But you're going to have to learn how to protect your life when you leave up under this, this safe heaven called, called the church. Because the world is putting a lot of pressure on the people. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. And so in saying all that, I began to study. So God took me back to Genesis. And I have read Genesis from start to finish. I've been reading the Bible since 1998, my God. But I begin to read this, Pastor Champ, and God never showed me what I'm supposed to get ready to give y'all. And I'm already behind on time, so I'm not going to try to rush and get to talking fast because I want to put something in you that's going to keep you. Yeah. See, I'm trying to say, but I've read this, so God was showing me, and I want to tell the church, my God, it's things, my God, that God was show, has showed me in 2018. He didn't show me in 2005. He didn't show me in 2004. He didn't show me in 1999. God gives you and I revelation as you and I need revelation. Yeah. See, you can't get it all. That's why the Bible tells you not to, not to go weary and well-doing. Some things, my God, ain't going to happen overnight. Oh, my God, God will reveal different things to you in different seasons, different dispositions, different times. My God, he ain't going to give it to you all at once, baby Cole. He's going to give it to you in stages. That's why I told the young men, the pastors, my God, during the men's encounter, that I thank God who will stay with me, that I thank God that I walked into my calling. I didn't try to, I didn't try to create my calling. Yeah. Yeah. I said I walked. Yeah. Yeah. I walked. 18 years right into the office of a pastor. I didn't try to jump, my God, from one year all the way to 18. I learned everything that I need to learn for that season, my God. And now Bishop has fathered me from a different perspective now. He's not fathered me from a disciple. He's fathered me from a pastor. But I walked into my calling. I did not try to create the calling of a pastor. I walked into it not even knowing I was called to pastor. Some of y'all trying to create something, but you ain't learned the lessons along the way. You want to walk into your purpose. You want to walk into your calling. Because when you walk into your calling, you're going to get everything you're supposed to get if you're teachable. If you're teachable. And so as I say all that, God took me back to the beginning. Who builds a boat in the desert? Show y'all what God does to a person that's willing. Who builds a boat in the desert? Who hammers away for 120 years on something that, may, that they may never need? Who beats, no matter that, who, who, who bets their entire future on something that has never happened before? 
based on based on the time, my God. Noah also had to grow the trees first, and after they were fully grown, my God, he then cut the trees, saw them into planks, and built the ark. Noah understood this wasn't a sprint; that this was a maze. This was a marathon. My God, Moses. I mean, Noah had uh, Noah had. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Noah had laser focus and discipline. Today we're going to talk about building by faith. So I'm going to ask you a question again: Who builds a boat in a desert? Who hammers away for 120 years, my God, on something that they may not, never need, or never use, even though Noah did use the boat, my God. But who builds a boat in the desert at this time, my God, when God had, my God, Moses write the scriptures in the book of Genesis, Rainberry had never, ever been on earth. And so God was showing me, my God, this is what I mean by revelation, Pastor Chim. And so God, at this time, rain had never, ever been on earth. So God finds this one righteous man, drops major revelation inside of his spirit. He said, I want you to build a boat. But my God, Noah didn't have a Moses. Noah didn't have a Joshua. So what is he going to reference a boat? He ain't never seen them. Yeah. Moses never even seen a boat, Janice. My God, so you're talking about a hammer. Where's a hammer? With screwdrivers and nails and never seen it. Oh, faith is a cold. Boy, I'm trying to let me. Ooh, oh, I should have took my time. Oh, uh, my God. And so, therefore, God asked him to do something that he couldn't even begin to imagine in his own mind because he never seen it. He never seen it. God would ask you to do something that blows your mind. You mean to tell me you want me to build a boat? I don't even know what a boat looked like. And then you asked me to build something that requires water? I ain't never seen rain. We're talking about building by faith. by faith. Oh, y'all with me so far? Yeah. God going to ask you to do something that, my God, that may not never been done on earth. Would you self-sabotage because it's not because it, it's not the familiar and you'd rather stay in the unfamiliar? My God, would you, st- would you not do it like this can't be God? I, I know this is not God. But this ain't never been done. See, a lot of people won't inspire to do nothing because they ain't never seen it before. Moses did something that was never on earth before. Come on, somebody. He had nothing to gauge. He couldn't look and say, okay, that go a boat. He couldn't Google, my God, boats and what a boat looked like and, and, what, and how to build this. And then he told him the measurements. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God has given me. This ain't even my note. But then he gave him the measurements. He said 45 feet. He said, he said 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, 18 inches open. What, what, what did he get the measurements from? Do you even know how long 40, 450 feet is? 18 inches. Do, how, how? I'm trying to help you, church. We're talking about faith, building in faith. How am I to accomplish this? Oh, my God, my God. How am I to accomplish this when I don't have nothing to gauge? I don't have nothing to go by. I ain't got no blue pitch. I can't Google nothing, my God. I can't call Minister Toronto and, and Minister Hunter and say, tell, tell me how to build a boat. I ain't got nobody to reference this. It's just me and God. Oh, God, to get you in a place where it's just you and him, baby. You can't believe and trust in me. You got to believe and trust only in God. God is going to ask you to do some things that can't nobody do it but God. And so Noah had to do something that we don't like to do as a body of Christ. So put point number one on the screen. I'm going somewhere I feel like teaching. Mm, My God, you're going to have to have a total trust. And so some of us may say, is that possible? I believe it is. I believe it is. I believe it is. I believe it is, because that's what Moses had to do. I mean, Noah had to do. And so if Noah, thank you, Holy Ghost, if Noah had to have total trust, he was able to. What makes you think that we can? Why would God tell us to be dependent upon him and then we not be able to be dependent upon him? See, then that would make God out of a lie, because God is asking us to do something that he knows that we cannot do. Then that means God will be an unjust God. And so whatever God has asked you to do by faith, it's in you to be able to do it. And whatever you don't have already on the inside, he's got people lined up already to come help you finish what he asked you to do. So Noah found, um, God found one person named Noah and asked him to do something, my God, that he had uh, no conscious mind to be able to do. I am not sure what went through Noah's mind. My God, when, when God told him to build the boat, but I can imagine him saying, you got to be kidding me. Noah didn't even have a cognitive understanding for, for, for what God was calling him to build. Watch this. Yet Noah did everything just as God commanded him. So my study, and I look up Mark Madison, all in. That's where you get a lot of this information from, all in. And so he began to make statements, my God, that made me think, okay, God, you have asked me to do something that I had no knowledge of. 
no cognitive knowledge of, no cognitive thinking. Didn't even have faith, my God, to do it because I wasn't thinking about pastoring. But you asked me to birth something that many people didn't think that you could do because I didn't do it, you did it. I just said yes. I just said yes. This ain't for me, this is for y'all. I just said yes. Are you not saying yes to something that you can do? Are you not saying yes to God? Are you not saying yes to something you can do? Are you not saying yes to God? When you don't say yes to God, when God told you you can, and you say no, you're in disobedience. That's why everybody always needs to say, God, forgive me for my sins. Because we commit sin and don't even realize we have committed sin. So what does God ask you to do by faith that you ain't done? Why are you and I disqualifying ourselves and saying we can't? Many of my daughters, my God, has went back to school. My God, they're getting their degree. Some of them is well, well past the natural years of going back to school, but God has given it to them by grace. God has given them the wisdom, my God. What else has God asked you to do? Some of you got businesses sitting on inside of you, but you won't step out on faith and do nothing about it. God has asked you to shift, but you won't shift because you're stuck in it for me. And so just because you have justified and said it's okay, and you okay and you're paying your bills and things is working out. But this, if you have not moved when God said move, you are in rebellion. Yeah. That is called S-I-N. Yes, sir. Yeah. So everything may be comfortable. What has God asked you to do that you have told yourself, I don't need to do it? I'm okay. Maybe this time next year. God said, no, I'll do it this year. But see, we got to have everything lined up before we move. Noah didn't have to have everything lined up. He had total trust. You're going to have to learn how to step out on trust. That's why you got to be getting it done in the dark. That's why you got to be flipping pages in the dark, my God. So when God say shift, ha, when God say move, ha, when God say that ain't it, my God, he ain't it, she ain't it, you ain't got no power with it because you heard God. See, many of us, my God, many of us are reluctant to step out on total trust because we really don't know God's voice. And if you don't know God's voice because you're not reading God's word, you're not going to know God's ways. And so therefore, something that seems, my God, crazy to the natural man, you will tell yourself, this cannot be God. What if Moses would have done that? God preserved the world, my God, through Moses' obedience. God killed everything. My God, John MacArthur said, my God, that God's patience, thank you, Holy Ghost, ran out with the first creation. He said, God said, I'm grieved that I ever made mankind. He said, my spirit would not strive with man always. God said, I'm sick of this wickedness. I'm sick of this violence. I'm sick of this sin. He said, I'm going to destroy it all. And then you jump over there to that Genesis chapter 9. God said, okay, I'll never destroy the world again by, by, by rain. And now I'm going to get this rainbow covenant. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to do it by fire next time. Oh, my God. But it won't be by rain. God is sick and tired. of. don't think God ain't going to revenge violence and we evil and wickedness, church. The world ain't getting away with nothing and neither are us. The Bible says judgment begins first with those in this church that profess to be Christian. Judgment starts first with you and I that profess to be Christians. God said, I'm sick that I even sick that I even made mankind. So he said he got to come up with a plan. You'll never catch God slipping. You'll never catch God slipping. Watch this. Mm. My God, Noah did everything just as God commanded. When the Spirit of God tell you when you read God's word, when you see something in God's word, quit trying to negotiate. Minister Lanny taught us something very profound in Mission Agreement, Mission Agreement class, the Mission Ingredient class with, with, through my spiritual father's brother, Ron McIntosh. He talked about, he gave a diagram, my God, and he used the soul and the spirit. And he talked about how, my God, it's the soulless man, mind, will, and emotions, my God, that, that, that we tend to live from. So you and I got to make sure that you get the soul, mind, will, and emotions up under submission, like I say, to the spirit. Because the Bible says you live from your soul. So if your soul is wounded, if your soul is unhealthy, if your soul is out of order, there's no way possible you're going to be able to see the promises manifest in your life. That's heavy. That's why you got many people that's in church, but they're not seeing no manifestation of this in their life. And then when they look at somebody that's seeing that the fruit and the promises of God are manifesting in their life, some people rejoice, others get envy. So, it's, so, so it don't do you no good to come to church and allow your soul, mind, will, and emotions to stay unhealthy. Why am I saying it? Because the Bible says it's with the mind that you serve God. So if my mind has that much importance and significance on my relationship with God, then I ought to do like Paul said in Romans 12. Be transformed by the renewing of my mind. You cross over from a, but a caterpillar to a butterfly by the renewing of your mind. The mind is just that important. But guess what? If your mind is not solidified, you'll never be able to trust God. You'll come to church, but do you trust God? 
Many of you is here, and I love you, and I thank God that you're here, but do you trust God? The Bible says confess, and after the confession, then you got to believe. See, it's one thing to confess Christ, it's another thing to believe that what you just confessed. Yeah. Many people come down to confess Christ and say a sinner's prayer, but they don't believe what they just said. Many people think they say, but they're not. Because you got to mix your confession with belief. He said, believe and you shall be saved. Not confess. That's the one part. That's the first part of the scripture. Confess, then believe. Yeah. And so if you don't confess and believe, they go together. They yeah. kiss they kiss one another, yeah. baby. Yeah. And if you're not doing both of them, my God, you better make sure that you're saved. Am I questioning your, your salvation? Nope, but I'm telling you what the book says. Confess and believe. If you believe, your belief is going to cause you to change your life. Yeah. Don't tell me you believe in God, my God, but you're still doing everything, my God, that you was doing three years ago when you confessed Christ. I said, don't tell me that you believe in Christ, but your behavior has never, ever shifted. The devil is alive. You're not saved. There's no way you can believe in the holy God and believe what the scriptures say and remain the same and keep doing the same old, same old, same old. I'm going to preach this like the bishop said. The devil is a lie. If you believe Christ is going to shift you, is there a process? Yes. But overall, you will not continue to look like you did when you first called yourself giving your life to Christ. Sooner or later, something got to shift in your mind. Many of us, God is waiting on you because you don't trust. God can't move you to the next dimension. God can't move you to the next level. My God. See, there's levels in the kingdom, baby. And there's levels to this thing called Christianity. This is the bottom level, the outer court. But as God try to move you into a higher level, my God, he got to move you in, in levels and stages when your trust increase. As God bless you and move you to another level, it should increase your love and your dependency upon God. When God opened up the windows of heaven and bless your soul, it should increase your tenacity and love for him. Because the trust that you had on the bottom level is going to take way more trust on the top level. What God is taking some of you, baby, the trust that you got now ain't strong enough, baby. Because any voice can get you to shipwreck. Any voice can get you to start contradicting the word of God. You don't know God's voice long, uh, 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 good enough, my God. That's why God can't move you to the next level. So many of us is truly, truly, to a degree, outgrown this level. But we don't have the trust to go to this level. So we stay in the familiar at that level and we frustrated right here, but we supposed to be up there. But God said, I can't move you down because it's going to take a deeper faith and a deeper trust. And so I got to keep you down here and allow you to wonder in Egypt until you get my strong enough to be able to trust me at another level. Ooh, somebody give God a hand. Ooh, I'm heavy, I'm heavy, I'm heavy. God wants to move you to another level. You have outgrown where you at. But he can't move you because where you're going, it's going to require a different level of faith and trust that you are not developing. And so, therefore, it's critical that you develop your trust level. Noah had to trust God to do this impossible thing. God is the God of the impossible. We sang the song and we even quote it. Oh, my God, but let him be the God of the impossible in your life. Because he showed being his ears right now. The God of the impossible in my life is good on this side. My God, I promise you, my God, God has done things that has blown my mind. I can't get nobody to say nothing, but I trust God. Not saying you don't, but I trust God. And so where you're going, you got to trust God. If you want to see the promises of God manifest and come alive in every area of your life, not some area. Remember I told y'all, many people got a church life, but they're miserable outside of the church. Only time they get happy is when they come to the church. But when they leave the church, they're in torment. You want the gospel. The gospel, my God, has enough power, oh my God, to affect every area of your life. You don't want just a good church life. Somebody ought to post that, baby. You want a full life, a complete life, my God. You want to have a vibrant walk with God. You want God, to, my God, to fill your temple, my God, with, with his presence and his power. I am, am I talking to the right crowd? Oh, my God, my God. But Mo, Noah did everything. Noah did everything according to to what God commanded him. But guess what? Here we go. Let me slow down. He didn't have that much to go off of. But he was able to do everything according to what God told him to do. That's heavy right there. I ain't never had a nail. I don't know nothing about no, how to saw out no wall. Come on. I don't know how. I, I ain't named some animals. What you mean name the animals? I, that was Adam's job. Now you ask me to do something. See, God asked you to do something. Oh, my God, y'all need to stay with me. God asked you to do stuff, my God, that will blow your natural mind. That's why you can't serve God from the five senses, baby. You got to walk by faith with God, my God. God will blow your mind if you just get your faith level up, if you just get your trust level up. Too many of you disqualify yourself because you're serving God out of your five senses. You're serving God out of a wounded soul. That's why people are leaving the church, this church, and every other church, because they're serving God out of a wounded soul, my God. Oh, they shipwrecked, my God. 
God. When they know God is calling them to let it go, when they know God is taking them to another level, they'll say, okay, I don't want to go. So they'll leave the church. Or they'll leave your life. Come on, somebody. Because they don't trust God with the next season of their life. Yeah. Yeah. You got to trust God with every season of your life. Yeah. You got to trust God. Yeah. Total trust. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Noah had total trust. I love God. He had total trust. Watch this. Mm. Most of us will only follow Christ to the point of the familiar. Mm. My God, a place we have been, born, we have been before. Uh, something we have done before. Now, Kendall sent me a video of the young man that was over there at Transformation teaching uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I don't know when it was, but he said something that leaped in my soul. He said Moses could not take the people into the promised land because Moses never went to the promised land. But God took his young soldiers, armor bearer, Joshua, Moses' son, Joshua over to spy out the land. So Joshua been to the promised land. Moses never crossed over to the promised land. And so you can't take nobody where you ain't been. And so Joshua took them to the promised land because Joshua had been. Oh my God. That's right. You can't take nobody where you ain't been, baby. Moses wasn't, my God. Moses wasn't the one, my God, to take them to the promised land. I thank God for the young men of God over there. Moses wasn't the one to take them to the promised land. I can only take you so far. I got some sons, my God, is going to take you to another level at going home for Christ Church. I might can take you so far, and then God going to raise up a young Joshua up under my leadership, and he's going to take you all the way in, baby. I can't get nobody to say, and I'm okay with that, baby. As long as I hear a job well done, my good and faithful servant, it don't matter. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to? So, 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 watch this. So you got to quit trying to take people where you ain't been. You got to quit telling people about something that you ain't conquering. You can't tell people about real freedom when you bound up. I can't get nobody. You can't preach against sin like the Bible tells us do. My God, are you dominated by sin? Oh, my God. You can't tell no young woman of God to get your self-esteem up when you let another man beat your self-esteem down. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, I like what my young daughter Tamir said when, I, when April put that post on there. What's some of the things your pastor would say? By the way, y'all think y'all know y'all pastor. We put that post on Facebook, my God. Y'all was talking about different things I would say, but I like what you said, daughter. Well, I can't remember, but you said, my God, a real woman, I guess, won't, won't, won't let a, a man mishandle their self-esteem or whatever. I don't know what it was, but see, it, ooh, you got to get to the point where you get healthy. Yeah. Where you start seeing yourself according to the way God sees you. Yeah. Or it may take some time to break camp in advance, but if you lift yourself up, it's a matter of time, baby. Sooner or later, young men and young women, my God, you got to make a decision, baby. You got to step out on nothing, on something, my God, and trust God. I'm going to trust God, my God. I'll use your help, but I can't use your help no more because it's contaminating me. I got to move to the next season. I got to let you go, baby. I'm sorry, but I got to shift on you. Oh, and I like what somebody said, never come before a king. Somebody understand principle. Never come before a king empty-handed. Many of you, that's what the world do. You go to the club, you got just enough money to go to the club to pay to get yourself in. And then you got enough money to buy y'all a little dang alcohol. Then you come to church on Sunday and won't give God nothing. I'm a man of what the great Bishop T.D. Jake said. The club is just like the church. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Slow down. Because you can go to the club. People say, well, if you go to church and have fun, I can go to the club and have fun. If you can go get caught up and dance and party in church, that person can say, I can go to the club and dance and party in the club. See what I'm trying to say? Many of us come up out of that. So what I'm trying to say, it got to be something different. Yeah. You got to offer the people that's in the world yeah. something different. Yeah. Because what, they, what you're telling them is different in the church. When they look at your life, they don't see no difference. Yeah. And so therefore, they say the same thing you're doing, I'm doing too. I'm having a good time doing it while you... Amen. See what I'm trying to say? Yes, see what I'm trying to say? So there's some people in your life that God has brought in your life that you're going to have to have trust God for them to come out. Yeah. And you got to trust them through your life. But you got to be willing to leave the unfamiliar, and you can't take nobody where you ain't been. Come on, somebody. When you choose to self-sabotage and stay in the familiar, you leave unclaimed gifts and anointings and dreams that God wants to give you. What have you left in Egypt? Well, Pastor, we want to leave some stuff in the world, yeah? But after God gets you healthy, there's some things you got to go back. There's some things I left after I got to go back, like your reputation. Like we've been dealing with on Wednesday, coming to church on Wednesday, with soul ties. Yeah. See, some of our soul is all over America. Yeah. California, Chicago, New York, Maine, 
Sacramento, good, good. Alabama, yeah. Arkansas, Georgia, wherever you're being, because whoever you slept with that wasn't covenant, wherever he, whoever he slept with, wherever he come from, that's all. He bought everything. Yeah. I'm trying to help the church. Uh -huh. So you got to begin to call your soul <laughs> back in. Yeah. That's a whole. I, I, see, I see you on Wednesday. I promise you won't want to miss Wednesday. I'm ready to get to Wednesday, my God. But you got to be willing to leave the unfamiliar. Yeah. A lot of us, my God, don't fully trust God because we want to stay stuck in the familiar. Yeah. If you're going to do great things, church, let me pick you up now. If you're going to do great things, if you're going to really understand when the scriptures say eyes are not seen, son, ears are not heard, and neither have it come into the mind of man the things that God has in store for them. You see what I'm trying to say? I was thinking today, my God went yesterday and bought me a little old shirt, and my wife said, baby, what are you doing at the mall? She said, you don't need nothing. I said, I just need something to wear. Something to wear. And I was thinking, I give God the glory. I was thinking, I said, man, I got clothes everywhere. I got stuff everywhere. I said, oh, my God, but I remember. Ooh, champ, but I remember when I sold my clothes for crack cocaine, when I didn't have number one pair of shoes, and I sold them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I got so much. <laughs> and I ain't got no debt, so don't think I'm lusting after stuff, because I'm debt free, baby. I own it. It don't own me. But I was thinking about the goodness she loved the Lord. How I couldn't even keep clothes. Sold all my clothes for drugs and all that stuff. Now when they ring the doorbell, <laughs> drop that off on me, son. Yeah, you, can't, you can't go buy this on the rack, baby. <laughs> uh, you can't go get some of this on the rack, baby. You got to have it signed for I can't. I, I'm boasting in God. I can't get nobody. To say, somebody give God a hand. So, don't, I'm not going to let you hate on me, baby. It's real simple over here, baby. I promise you. I give God the glory. Won't you give God some glory for your life right now? Because I'm going to give him a hey! Ha! The devil is a lie. You'll never be able to put me in a box. You won't be able to put me in a box. The devil is a lie. I was just willing to leave the familiar. I've been willing to trust God since I gave my life to Christ. I had to trust him to set me free. And I only that had to trust him to keep me free. God is able not only to set you free, but keep you free. But do you want to be free? Some of the things that God is asking you to do, it's going to take total dependency. It's going to take total trust. That's why God said those that endure to the end. Moses built the boat for 120 years, my God. That means he didn't get weary and well-doing. And rain still hadn't hit the earth. Can you imagine building something for 120 years, my God? And you don't know what you're building it for. And you don't know who you're building it for. Come on, sir. What you're building it for and who you're building it for. But he stayed consistent for 120 years. That's why it ain't no sprint. It's a marathon when you serve God. That's why many quit because they run for the sprint and not a marathon. The Bible says, prepare your mind, Peter said, for action. You got to anchor your soul, my God, and tell yourself, this is a marathon. I'm in it for the long haul. It ain't no shadow of turning. I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. Whoever walk away, let them walk. Whoever don't come back, let them leave. Whoever don't praise them, I'll give them some glory. You got to have that type of mindset. It don't matter what people think. You're going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. Some of you got to go back and recommit yourself to God. You didn't quit, my God. At the first sign of resistance, you didn't quit on God. Noah built the boat for 120 of them, baby. Give me a dollar and a dub, baby, and let's keep pushing. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That blow my mind, Dion. This man built for 120 years. Oh, he, the Bible said he never got fatigued. He never got, uh, he never questioned God. God, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? He just built out obedience. <laughs> oh, that was point number two. He just built out of trust, my God. Who am I talking to in the church? There are certain things that God is going to reveal to you in stages. So you got to keep on hammering away. You got to keep on doing what he told you to do. You got to keep on trusting. <laughs> when everybody laughs at you, I'm going somewhere. When everybody talk about you, said you got to look like a fool. I can imagine how more, Noah felt. He looked like a fool. Ain't no rain been on the earth, my God. People People laughed and mocking them. And the Bible says they partied and kicked it right up into the day of the flood. They partied and kicked it right up to the day of the flood. And then bam. How many of you have quit? Because people start mocking you. Because people start laughing at you. There's a whole lot of them have. And a whole lot of them been right here. They quit. Because they want to go back to the familiar. Let's bring it up. Old Testament was when God delivered them from Egypt. Egypt in the Old Testament represents captivity. New Testament, I mean, new, this, the 21st century, it means the world. And so, therefore, many people, when God delivered them from Egypt, the world, and captivity, my God, when they get to the training port, wilderness, they said, it's too hard. 
I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. As I told y'all, anything you don't confront yeah. won't change. Yeah. And so what I've seen in the body of Christ with people everywhere, when they get to a certain point, when it's time to really confront the soulless man, it's so painful. They turn around. And go back to the familiar. You want something better. That's what your mind tell you. But your spirit, you attract into your life your most dominant thought. So you tell yourself you want something better or you want a better person. But you don't stay down long enough. As soon as the enemy come and bite you, Python, and start speaking to you, you done let somebody in that wasn't purpose. You let Ishmael in and not Isaac. I said you let Ishmael into your life and not Isaac. I said you let Ishmael into your life and not Isaac. Soon as the serpent starts whispering, soon as the serpent starts whispering in your ear, because you wasn't disciplined enough to build for 120 years. Dear my God, you stopped trusting God after three years. I've been single too long. I've been kept too long. I need to go out and get me a little something like some, some, some. Come on, somebody. So therefore, you let you let the Ishmael come in instead of the promise. I can't get nobody to say nothing. And now you got something inside of you that you wasn't expecting. Now you got something inside of you that you wasn't ready for. You just stepped out of the covenant. You just stepped out of the wheel. My God, you got something on the inside of you that you wasn't ready for. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to? Because you stopped trusting God. And you open up yourself, my God. And now you got that Mary J. Blige syndrome. This baby is yours. I'm talking about trust. I ain't going to even mess with point two because I'm watching the time. Trust. You got to be willing to leave the familiar. You got to be willing to leave the, the, the familiar. The, the unfamiliar. You got to be willing to leave the unfamiliar. My God, you got to be. The familiar will keep you in bondage. The familiar, that what you know by your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind. Don't you know a lot of our conscious mind is wounded? Don't you know a lot of people serve God? You learned it today, man of God. My God, it's like I have, son. My God, many people in the body of Christ, uh, saved people, serve God from a wounded conscience. The mind is all messed up. You got to allow God to go into your mind like I do every day and renovate. You got to allow him to gut your mind. That's why you keep going so far and then you stop, my God. That's why you keep making some progress and then you find yourself taking four, five steps back, my God. Because you're self-sabotaging, my God. You don't believe that you can, my God. But if you tell God, my God, to increase your total trust in him, my God, you'll see God do some things that you never imagined him to do. But be careful when you start asking God to increase your trust because he's Gonna send you through the fire. He's gonna refine you like fire, gold in the fire, my God. You said you want me to you want me to teach you how to trust me. I'm gonna send you through something so I can build your trust, my God. We talking about building a life of faith, my God. Everybody wants faith, but nobody won't test it faith. Everybody wants God, but nobody wants to pay a price to have God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so if you're gonna cry out to God for trust, you better be ready to go through some trials to get the trust. Oh my God, that's all you got to be anchored. That's why you got to know in whom you believe and what you believe. Oh, you can't get shook when things shift in your life. I'm standing strong no matter what it looked like external. Because I know what God said internal. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And as for me and my house, everything in my house will be saved. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You got to stand, my God. When you've done all the else to stand, you got to stand. Flat-footed in the gospel, baby. Trust. You got to trust them with your pain, baby. Trust God with your pain. God didn't cause it, the devil did it, but trust them with your pain. Trust them with your wounds. Trust them with your heartaches. Trust them with your anger. Trust, 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 trust. And you'll see God do some mighty thing. Trust. Mixed with faith. You can't say you got faith and you don't trust. Faith and trust go hand in hand, baby. Ain't going to tell me you got faith in God, you don't trust God. You can't even trust God. My, mm. Somebody give God a hand. Oh my God. Noah built by faith. He built in a desert. No rain had ever been on the ground. Rain. I ain't got no hammer, no screw. I don't know how to measure nothing. He was totally dependent on God. Do you understand, Asia, that he had to be totally dependent on the voice of God to do what the natural man probably couldn't even imagine? That's what God got some of us right now, uh, Minister Madeline. He got us in a season where we can't do nothing but depend on God. And that's a good place to be in. Because then you move from not my will. Huh? 
Ah, not my will, but thy will be done. And that's what some of us got to do, my God. And some, some of us, God got to keep, my God, he got to keep his hands on us. But then there's others that God has taken it to a new level where God say, okay, I'm not going to feed you for mama. Now you got to believe me for mama. <laughs> I'm not going to give you water out of a rock. <laughs> you got to believe me now for water out of a rock. Oh, you trust me to deliver you from Egypt? Can you trust me to take you to the promised land? And see, God got some of us in different seasons. Are uh, you listening to me? So if you mishandle, that's why you can't mishandle your seasons. That's why a lot of us is frustrated because we're trying to stay in the familiar. Yeah. We passed that season. And you're trying to operate and do business in a season that God said you've already had grown. Yeah. Because you stay there because you're dealing with the familiar. You got to be willing to leave the familiar and chump the unfamiliar. Yeah. Are you with me so far? And so if many of you are frustrated, ask yourself, am I, am I, am I out of season? Yeah. Am I out of season in my walk with God? Have God told me to do something? If you do a self-evaluation, like we're supposed to do when we take the Lord's Supper, if you and I, I and you do a self-evaluation, we probably will find out, my God, the reason why some of this stuff is going on because I ain't done what God told me to do. Yes, yes, yes. I keep negotiating with God. That's contract. When you're on covenant with God, you don't negotiate. When the king is decreed, you operate in that what the king has decreed. Your job as an ambassador of the kingdom is to advance that what God has told you to do. And so what has God asked you to do, Toya? So that's what you got to be doing. We don't have time to be making no excuses. What has God asked you to do, Francetta? What has God asked you to do, Dion? George, what has he asked you to do? Man of God, what has he you to do? You cannot negotiate God's will for your life, baby. All you're doing is slowing up, my God, the blessings. All you're doing, my God, is hindering what God is trying to do in your life. What has God asked you to do that you have not done? And you know why we have not done it? Because we don't trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Noah built in holy reverence. I'm bringing it in. He built in holy fear. Yeah. If you're going to do great exports for God, you're going to have to do it by faith and you're going to have to do it with trust. Yeah. Time out, my God, for not trusting God. God not going to do you like your natural father did you if you had one. He ain't going to do you like your mama did you. He ain't going to do you like the teacher did you. And he definitely ain't going to teach you like your husband done it. And that go both ways. Yeah. Trust God. Yeah. Trust God. And, and build a boat. In a desert. Start a company with no money. Notice I didn't say business. I said company. Birth that ministry. Birth that business. Come on. Be the kinsman redeemer of your family. God bought some of y'all like I told Jamie on in the service yesterday. God bought some of y'all so he could bring your family out. God is waiting for you to get your trust level right so he can begin to send your loved ones to you that's in bondage. See, I'm trying to say, he can't do nothing because you don't trust God to be able to do it. You pray God save my family. You pray God save my children. God save my grandchildren. Then you turn around and don't trust him to do it. He said, we honor God with our mouth, but our heart is far from him. Trust him with your next. Trust him with your future. Trust him with your shift. Trust him with Martha's heart. Trust him with just the beginning. Trust him with whatever ministry God has called you to do. Trust him with the jail ministry. Trust him with your marriage. Trust him with your children. I don't care what your children is doing. Trust him, my God. Trust him. I'm doing it. I'm doing the very thing I'm telling y'all to do. I'm trusting God. I'm about to finish. Thank you, Lord. Unclaimed gifts. You done left over in the world. If you want God to do something new, you cannot keep doing what you've always done. We have to push. Somebody write down push. We have to push past the fear of the unknown and do something different. You got to do something different. Jamie I made a statement in the uh, uh, grade 14 graduation, my God, that they had yesterday. He said, my God, uh, I got to start dressing like where I'm going. He said, that's why I started wearing suits and vests and all that stuff, because I got to start dressing. At first, he said, I didn't used to care about what I, he'd been clean and sober for over a year. Come on, stand up, Jamie. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. He done got clean and sober. God restored him. I married him and his beautiful wife. Stand up, baby. Stand up. Stand up. She be right down there with him at the altar going hard. Come on, somebody. I thank God you may be seated. But he said, my God, I got to start looking like where I'm going. You come on, Barry. You heard him. I got to start dressing like where I'm going. That's why I told y'all some of us don't care how we look. You want everything, but you ain't willing to pay the price to do nothing. If you think you called to another level, then dress like you called. My God, you might not have the car. You might not have the money, my God. But I'm going to look like I got the car and I got the money. You better learn how to talk to yourself, baby. Ooh, my God. Mm. 
But I listen to the testimonies. I'm bringing it in. I listen to the testimonies in Wave 14 graduate tequila ministering. My God, Destiny ministering. My God, Sister Joy singing and so forth. And I missed the testimony. I need you to send me Barry's testimony, whatever he said. My God, I got to make sure it's the my God. He my God, because I know my God. Many of them counted him out like they counted me out. Or they think it's just a fab. It's okay, baby. I'm gonna stand with you. We're gonna walk this thing out. My God, let them keep hating, let them keep talking about you. They do the same thing to your pastor. But I'm still gonna shine. I ain't got no problem with it, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so many people is counting you out, baby. But I'm hearing testimonies after testimony after testimonies of the people. Orlando, he not heard, but his beautiful wife is heard. And the different people, my God, that testified about Minister Tedrick in April in the class. And I'm thinking about my God when I went home, friends said, I thought about discipleship. I'm looking at the lives that has been completely transformed. Yeah. Oh my God, son, I draw so much strength because you clean this over Sherrod now, clean this over three months. I can't get nobody to sit right now. Shirai stood up and said, boy, I had. Shirai was struggling with marijuana, my God, but he listened to Jamie on. Jamie on, he got clean and sober. And Shirai said, you know what? I've been clean and sober for the last three or four months because of what God did in your life. That's discipleship right there. Oh, my God, the kingdom and redeemer. Oh, he going to redeem the family. I decree it and I declare it. Your brothers and sisters and father and many more is coming in because of your life. All you need is one person that'll say yes. One person that'll live holy. One person that'll stand for God. One person that'll be laughed at. One person. All you need is one. One person. Will you be that one? Will you be that one? Mm. Let me get y'all out of here. So you got to push past your fear. We want, watch this, we want a money back guarantee before we take a step of faith, baby. I ain't going to do it unless I got the money in the bank. Noah didn't have no money in the bank. He didn't have no tools. So thank you, Holy Ghost. See, I didn't even know this to this now. But that's how God deal with me. I'm trying to shift, Tony. But where did he get the tools from? Where, where did the tools come from, Sheila, to be able to build a boat? Where did the saw come from? He didn't, he, he didn't, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God is speaking. I'm serious, y'all. Watch this. I'm going to blow your mind. Uh, God, God destroyed everything. So where did the people come from? Who did he use? The Bible don't say that he sent a missionary. The Bible didn't say he sent Andre and them to him. It didn't say he sent brother peoples. Who and what did he use? Who did he use to build a boat? Where, where did the screwdrivers and stuff come from? Where did the hammers come from? What, what, where? How did he think about naming the creatures? How did he get the names? <laughs> what was the architect at that gave him the blueprints, my God, and showed him what to be? Yeah. I'm trying to help somebody. See, you got to get to the point where you're building that faith, where you're trusting that faith, where you're walking by faith in the things of God. Oh, you're not going to be able to do the things God calls you to do unless you do it with holy fear and holy faith, baby. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let me bring this thing to a call. We talking about building by faith. Oh, Brandon, I just thought about you. That quick, man of God, before I even looked at you. My God, it's taking faith for Pastor People to be where he's at. Your struggle is my struggle. My God, God is going to do it for you, son. Everything you're working out, hold by, she cared about. Yeah, because you're standing for righteousness. God know that you want to do this thing right. God know that you don't want to be living like that. Come on, somebody. Just keep on walking, baby. Keep on trusting. You got a living example right here. Moses didn't have, I mean, Joshua didn't have this, but you do. Come on, somebody. So I come from what you come from, baby. Cut like you cut. My God, don't tell me you can't do it because I did it through Christ. And you can do it. Who am I talking to in the church? You need a Joshua in your life. You need a Moses in your life. You need somebody you can point to and say, help me. Help me. Some of you will be way farther along if you get someone to get planted and get still and quit making excuses. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You won't step out, my God. But when you don't step out by faith, then guess what you do? You eliminate faith from the equation. If you don't step out by faith, you eliminate faith from the crazy. So, so, so if you're trying to get God to build your faith, watch this, watch this, Lada. If you're asking God to build your faith and God put you in places and situations to build your faith and you don't step out, you're limiting your faith. So you ain't got nobody to be frustrated with but yourself. God said, okay, I'm trying to help you. Here go what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the very thing that you think I'm not going to use. I'm going to use Tanya the very people that you think I'm not going to use. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to raise up yeah. the very young soldiers, the black sheep of the family. Uh -huh. My God, to be the kingdom and redeemer yeah. of the family. <laughs> oh, I'm going to look back. 
Let me finish. Ushikirabas. Building by faith. Trust in God. You can't move forward, church, until you trust him. That holding pattern he got you in because he said you ain't, you ain't trusting me. I can't shoot you out. I can't give you. I can't, ooh, I can't talk to you from heaven. Uh, like, 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 like the communicator, my God, or the plane, my God, communicating with the earth tower. My God, I can't, God can't communicate with you, my God. He can't tell you to okay, start you to sin. Start, 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 start. You're sin, you're sin. He can't tell you that because you ain't ready to take off yet. First of all, you got to solidify God's voice in your mind. Come on, God got some of you on idle pilot. God got great things in store for the body. In the end, we win. But that's not the end when we get to heaven. You can win and dominate the earth now. Are you listening to me? Let me bring this point in and get you out of here, my God. And so don't quit eliminating faith. Quit eliminating your faith. It's going to take a greater faith and a greater trust for the next season. It's going to take a greater faith and greater vision for hats and chats. You have a great opportunity to do something great with that. That could be an annual event, my God, that draws people from all over the country. You got to have faith. You got to build it by faith. You got a total trust. So what God say do, do. If he say shift and clean up that, mm, clean it up and let it go because you don't want nothing to keep you on the runway when you're supposed to be yeah. as an eagle. Yeah. That business you got, my brother, you know the company that you got? You got a company. You get good money. God got way more than that for you. Your influence is great already. Think about all the people that work for you. What about their soul? You give them the paycheck, but what about their soul? So now you got to seek the purpose for why God birthed that company that's successful that you have. See what I say? Now God has sent you like God sent animals to the boat for no other name. God has sent you young men to speak into their identity. To tell them who they are. But you got to know who you are so you can tell them who they are. And you think you're blessed now, which is you are. The heavens will open up on your life. See, everybody got a purpose. Everybody got a purpose. Everybody got a purpose. Everybody got a purpose. Laser focus. Specific what God has asked you to do in this season. One of the things you don't want to do is allow your life to mock you. Doing a whole lot of stuff, but you ain't got no boat that you didn't build. One thing about Moses, he looked like a fool, Tiffany, but he got a hundred, a 450 yard boat right there that's saying, I obey God. Yeah. Yeah. Where your boat at? Yeah. What have you built that you could point to and say, God built this through me? Who have you brought to the church, 144, that you can say, because of my lifestyle outside the four walls, this person is now in the ministry, Jesus. loving God, behind me, building and trusting God. See, you got to get to that point where souls matter. Where people matter. That's the kingdom. The currency in the natural is money. The currency in God's kingdom is people. You can't say you don't need people. You can't say you love God and not love the people. You can't say your relationship with God is by faith and yet you care nothing about his people. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me another drink. My God, I was in prison, you didn't, you didn't come visit me. See, God, they said, when did you do all this? We well, didn't do it to the least of one of these. You didn't do it to me. Love thy neighbor as thyself, the second greatest commandment. See, if you make your life about the people, I promise you, you'll see God do great things in your life. I know I didn't get a lot of amens, but that's okay. Let me bring it in. We need to put ourselves... In a situation that activates our spiritual gifts. Get around some fire. One thing that the bishop said from New York yesterday, he said we got to go back as a church. My God, just a few more. He said we got to go back to the church. And we got to get some fire off the altar. Yeah. Yeah. My God. So I told God ever since yesterday I was in prayer, God, give me the fire off the altar. Yeah. That pure and undefiled fire. Ain't no contamination, minister hunters, on the altar. We got to get to the point, body of Christ, where you go get your fire from the altar. Altar represents sacrifice, baby. Ooh, my God. You're trying to get this thing, my God, from many different places, but you got to go to God. You got to go back to God who made you. He's a source. You got to go back to total trust on God. Quit putting your trust in people, 401k, your job, your husband, your wife, your kids. My God, some prophetic word way outside of what? Go back to the altar, my God, and get your fire. And quit going and getting and moving around with this strange fire that's in the earth on the day. My God, let me feel. Uh, you got to tap into your spiritual gifts. Tap into your spiritual gifts. That's what Noah had to do. 
He didn't know he was called to build something. Everyone in there is a builder of people. You are a builder of people as a disciple and ambassador of the kingdom. You are called to build people. That's why you got to build your lives one brick at a time. Nehemiah was a builder. He went back and rebuilt the city. What are you building in your life? Ooh, Lord have mercy. What are you building in your life? And after you get to what are you building, who are you building? Who are you building? Who are you building? Who? You don't have to be perfect to build. You don't have to be way up here to build. You could be down there and still be building somebody else. You ain't got to get hurt. My God, let God use what you already got. Moses, what's in your hand? My God, it was a, it was a skeptor. Skeptor, use it. Use it. We'll use what's in your hand. Part the Red Sea with what's in your hand. You got that much authority, my God, and that much power, my God. Use what's in your hand. Moses was looking for something, my God. God said, this use what's in your hand. What's in your hand? Yeah. Thank you, Lord yeah. Jesus. What's in your hand? Yes, Lord. What is that in your hand? Yeah. That rod, that staff, use it. So I can part the Red Sea and do a miracle. What's in your hand? What, use this as a weapon. Amen. Use this as a weapon to glorify the kingdom. Use this as a weapon to horrify the devil. Use this as a weapon to post scripture, to talk about, my God, testimonies that's happening all around your life. What are you using this for? Some, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to finish. And some of this is your biggest weapon right here. This is your idol. You love and trust this more, my God, than you trust the God who created it. I said you love this and you trust this more than you trust the God who created it. The Bible says don't worship the created thing. Worship the creator of the thing. Who am I talking to? Some of you can't go 30 minutes without your phone. Come on, somebody. This is your God. You trust this right here. You can't even make it without this right here. It's an idol in our lives. We need to repent. We need to repent. We trust that more than we, come on. We spend more time reading that. Then we do this, and that's why we don't have no holy trust. Notice I said holy trust. I'm trying to shift God. Holy trust. Holy trust. Do you spend more time on your phone than your people? How is your phone going to transform your mind? Quit justifying that you're reading your Bible on your phone. That's okay too, but you sooner or later you got to have this manual in your hand, baby. A phone and, a, and, a, and an iPad can't replace this right here, baby. Oh, this is the very word, my God. Written down by God. Yes, that's the word, but it ain't nothing like flipping these pages, baby. Total trust. Total trust. We must develop a spiritual hunger for the unfamiliar. Spiritual hunger for the unfamiliar. Got to leave the familiar. You got to leave what you think you know. You got to leave all the critics behind. You got to be willing to leave the naysayers behind to do what God has called you to do. My God, you got to lose your appetite you got to lose your appetite for the familiar. We, as a body of Christ, all around the nation, has to lose our appetite for the familiar. Long as you keep depending on God to give you water from a rock and mama from heaven, you'll never do great exports for God. Long as you're depending on your job and your education, solely, my God, for your, to be your provider, what you going to do when they walk in and give you a pink slip, and say, pink slip and they say, we ain't got no sevens packet for you? Then what you going to do? You said, God, build my faith and build my trust. Well, get ready to be. Mm. Don't think that he won't do it. Don't think that he won't do that. Oh, Lord, don't let that happen to me. I know y'all thinking that. That's okay. If one door closed, don't quote it. Another one open. Sometimes God is getting ready. Thank you. Y'all can stay and stand. God is getting ready. Go ahead and stand on your feet. God is getting ready to close some doors in all of our lives. Because he got to open up some more doors. Some of us got to make some decisions about that unholy life that we live in in private. We laying up with men and women that ain't our wives and husbands. Breaking covenant. We self-sabotaging. We don't think, my God, some of our women in here that's single, you don't think that you deserve nothing better because your soul is so wounded. You think that all you can attract is a man that work at Burger King, which is, I'm not against Burger King, but God, my God, sooner or later, come on somebody, instead of, you know, you might start off working at Burger King, but you should have a mind to own the Burger King. We win. You got to understand, we win, baby. So if you need to, my God, if you need to, in any area, trust, we talking about trust, come on down to the altar. God to anchor your trust. Who need?
to get back to total dependence on God and not on flesh and not on self. All of my children that's off in there that understood what the Spirit of God was saying, you come down to. You're more than welcome to come down and kneel for those that's able to. Some of us, my God, ain't going to go hard for God until we get $100,000 in the bank. Well, guess what? You'll never go hard because he ain't going to let you get it that way. You got to get it one brick at a time. 